Hello everyone, welcome back to Journey Beyond the Abyss. So, nothing to it but to get to it. Let's just uh, get on building a smeltery. So, we're going to need to make these mud bricks here. That's going to require liquid dirt, one ingot per, and what do we get for... Yeah, coal, coal. Yeah, that's... Ah, there it is. Dirt puzzle. Yeah, that's just one dirt per ingot. And how many are we going to need for the smelter? We are going to need 12 of them. So, we just need to go ahead and melt 12 dirt. Easy, please. And... A go on the first three, at least. I guess while that's cooking, I should be cycling some of my other machines. Well, let's... Let's make us some let's make us some bricks and let's finish off the burner. Just cause. Yeah, that's a good guess. If I have some extra, it's no big deal. If I don't have enough, it's even less of a big deal. Let's start with the top, just because that's usually the most of a pain. There we are. Yeah, unfortunately, that wasn't the most annoying to do. There we go. Yep, looks like we got a few extra, but it's fine. We might just end up expanding it later, or... No, actually, we had exactly enough. Wow. I miscounted. Well, there we are. A nice, big, chufty, refractory burner. All completely enclosed. Nice and snug and lovely. I don't really have any wood I can put into it right now. I suppose I could go cut my wood while more dirt is melting. There we go. And let's go ahead and... Uh, make this stack invisible. And yeah, let's let's keep ourselves moving at fo at full speed as often as we can for a little while. Get used to that feeling cuz pretty soon we're going to unlock a means of uh we're going to have ourselves some tinker's armor to do even better. There we are. And if we want to. Now, this will operate the same as the pit burner. It'll still produce charcoal, charcoal chips, and wood tar. However, on a pit burner, it produces on average 10 charcoal with a failure of 30, or yeah, 10 charcoal, some ash, uh, some charcoal flakes, four, six, and eight, one, two, and four, and a failure rate of 33%. In a refractory burn, that failure is down to 3%. Yeah. And also, what was the time? Eight minutes either way. So. We should see that we end up with a lot more charcoal, a lot more wood tar, and a lot less ash, I do believe. Because I think ash is the failure product. Well, we can probably begin casting out our ingots while the rest of the dirt is melting. Yes, these lovely little mud bricks, they're more or less just a crafting ingredient, really. I could make these mud bricks, but they're only decor blocks. 
I don't think they're useful for anything. Are they even... Are these forestry? No, they're Tinker's Construct. Like, if they were forestry, they might be useful for the forestry pit burning. But they're not. And, yep, almost there. Really need to get myself some pollution filters. Hmm. It seems to have drifted to the north. I wonder what's up with that. All right, so there is our mud bricks. Huh. You know, I might as well keep these stone doors and use them just to shut up the, uh, like, use them as my door doors. Okay, so next we are going to need a bunch more grout. And for that, we're going to need a bunch more cobble. Yeah. Because that is still the most convenient way to get pebbles, and thus to get gravel. Which gravel is the bulk of grout. Hmm. <laughs> Come on, game. Stop lagging, please. There we go. Yes, lacking the resources. Maybe I should build the uh, clothiers station. Let's cycle their windows while we're here. Just gradually keep on increasing our money. And let us buy just the two stacks so that we can make one invisible and thus walk back at our own pace. Not have to crawl. I suppose if I was really dedicated I could just make them all pebbles right here. That might be wise. Yeah, here's a nice open spot. Except now there's villagers walking all over the place. So they will interrupt. It's fine. Yep. Pebbles weigh nothing. Really, though. On a, I, I've, I told you I have a test world that's creative mode. I made this pickaxe in that mode, and I tested it. And it was able to pick up it was able to pick up uh, pyrotech limestone. It was able to pick up cobblestone without, you know, turning it into pebbles. I don't know what's up with this pick and it's silk touch not working for me. Like, the silk touch shouldn't conquer all. Pyrotech does guarantee a lot of pebble drops, but it should be solving some things. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. It's weird. What I really wish was if I could just put these things on the dang anvil like any I says I should be able to. Yeah, but no, that did not work when I tried it. What do you think, Padre? Do you think it's bug or a feature? Mysterious as always, God wills it. Yep, 
definitely have to be careful about making sure that I get to bed before the mobs begin spawning. How much grout, how much gravel do I want to build? I haven't exactly sat down and calculated this like I did when I was making the melter. But then again, I'm not exactly on a budget of resources like I was with the melter. I don't know. Maybe I should just make a stack of gravel? Yeah. So 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48. We're getting there. It might be done by the time we're done processing this second stack of cobble. Curse my luck. Getting cobble instead of pebbles is supposed to be a rare drop. Why does it keep happening? And why couldn't it happen when this was limestone? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, not... Oh, yeah, eight. Eight and some change. Excellent. We just need to compact it all. I could make myself a, uh, what's it called? A mechanical, a mechanical, uh, I guess we haven't unlocked it yet. There is a pyrotech mechanical tool to do this for us though. I think it's called a mechanical compactor or something like that. It's a really simple name, real simple device. It's cog powered. But that is not here yet. And in any case, to really use it, I would want to put hoppers on it. And that would either mean more chest crafting or more chest hunting, both of which are uh, not the most exciting of tasks. Not that this is exactly high action here, but such is life. Hello. Oh, out of out of stomach. There we go. Sixty and sixty-four. There we go. Nice. Yeah. Let's let's get these spares. We'll just use it to fill in the storage space once we're done turning it all into Groot. I guess that these must be infected. Let's go sell them. The millionaire villagers don't care if stuff's infected. They're like kind of early renaissance. They they don't have a germ theory of disease quite yet. And if they don't know about it, it doesn't exist for them. Just ignore the rampant Ebola. Keep on working. You're just making me more money. And 
That's always something I approve of. What are we doing, by the way? Yeah, we're closing, we're closing in bit by bit. Just several more of those cycles and uh, should have ourselves the ability to buy a life and then I'll feel a bit more secure. Probably not secure enough to try another experiment with the Enlightenment, but uh, a bit more secure. One or one of those is infected. I'll just get rid of the lesser. All right, so next, I guess we're gonna need sixteen of these. We're gonna need four of these. Sixteen of these. And I think that should be it. Yes, and it's going to need the trowel. Might need more liquid clay, too. Thankfully, we had some prepared. Just want to keep this going whenever possible. And let's make some grout. Just as easy as that. And next I'm going to need a lot more glowstone which is going to necessitate another trip to the abyss. So, let's make sure our chisel is empty, just in case we want to grab something nice for ourselves. Probably more prismarine. And let's hope that we don't get horribly telefragged. Huzzah! We've survived. Now let's hope we don't get horribly drowned. Or dehydrated or any of the other ways we can die. Let's, well, I guess if I'm searching for glowstone, I don't need the flashlight. Oh ho! Now isn't that an interesting occurrence? Yeah, would you look at that? So can I turn that to powder any which way? No, it's not not until I get a crusher anyway. Still. Okay. So glowstone is officially on the menu for uh for decoration. Let's uh just in case we mine up all the glowstone in this path. Yeah, view is getting really closed in because this stuff weighs a kilogram per. Or rather, 10 kilograms per. Yeah. It weighs. Unfortunately, we can't mine obsidian yet. I could gain the ability to mine obsidian by... Um, putting a diamond on my pick, but that would cost a modifier. Yes, uh, putting a diamond... using a diamond as a modifier for a Tinker's Construct tool will increase its durability, increase its mining speed, I think, or possibly not, and will for sure increase its mining level by one up to Obsidian. But I think that's a poor use of a modifier. In any case, let's just a dupe. And you do not exist. Now let's get some prismarine. Just as a little parting gift. And let's go home. And hope this doesn't insta-give us. Huzzah! 
Yes, making myself a nice little stock of, of Prismarine. Just for the purposes of uh, tool repairs and more tools we might want to create in the future. So, we could... We're, we're going to have a much easier time lighting up the floors in the future. We don't need to do that stuff with... Uh, and honestly, these pumpkins are... Eh. More importantly, though, being able to hold on to glowstone... Well, glowstone blocks weigh a lot. And jack-o'-lanterns weigh nothing. So, if we're going to go exploring deep in the abyss without a source of night vision, then... Yeah, jack-o'-lanterns are still probably the thing to use. Let's just make ourselves a Minecraft pick to uh, break up the break up the glowstone. If it's dropping, if it's dropping four per, that should be a stack's worth of dust. If it's dropping a random amount, then maybe I need to make a second pickaxe with luck. Yeah, it looks like it's slightly randomized. Shoot. Oh well, not a huge deal. So we found something that our Soak Touch works on. That's interesting. It's proving, in fact, that something is happening with the tool. I think I need to move the trowel over here to do this. I should probably fill out all the tools, just make make tools for each station. Mm. Eh. Needs way more clay than that. Let's just uh, put this away. And yeah, the only reason why I didn't use the Norman pick is because it's pretty much unique. We might as well just keep it as a conversation piece, not waste it. Because heaven knows I'm not going to make a Norman village just to get a toolsmith in it. That's pretty much the only industry that this town won't generate. Yeah, look at that. Only a tiny amount of charcoal flakes, lots of big charcoal. And an absolutely minuscule amount of ash. That's a refractory burner for you. And it's going to produce a lot of wood tar, too. That was one, two, three, Three and about a third, maybe. 
buckets of wood tar out of a single burn of nine blocks. That's not bad. That is not bad at all. So, these seared bricks. We're going to need to make them into four seared brick blocks. Which we could technically make cheaper than this. If I take just four of them and put them in the melter... Yeah, that'll melt in there. That'll melt. Let's get ourselves just a couple prismarine to repair our tools while we're waiting. Three ingots, four ingots will make a block instead of the five it would demand to cobble it together in here. I suppose I could get another burn going just to start cycling it through. Eh, honestly, I'm pretty good on charcoal at the moment. Yes. So, we can just cast it out into this. Now, this won't be quite what we need just yet. See, this is just seared stone. It's plain. It's, it's not the right... It's not ore dictionaried. But... We can take our chisel, and I need to put that glowstone away somewhere. Eh, let's put it... Let's treat it like a metal block. Yeah, because we're treating glowstone dust like a metal. We can take it in here, and we can just turn it into seared bricks. And yep, that's our quest. That's the right one. So, slightly cheaper seared bricks, not costing us the refractory clay not costing us it's costing us one less brick it's very slightly better the joys of having a chisel continue to be wonderful the last thing that we need to make the smeltery. Well, let, let's see here. We have the drain. Yeah, we made the drain. Drain tank. What is the smallest size smeltery you can make? Let's see here. The smallest size smeltery is... put down a bottom block then on the other sides you have like that so one of those will be the tank one of those will be the controller one of those will be the drain and one of those has to be another block so it needs a block here a block here I'm gonna need two blocks aside from all the other parts I have and I'm going to make so once I Once I have these smeltery cores materials assembled, I still need to make two more blocks besides. And that will give me the minimum sized smelt. Why are you not melting? You could be molten just a second ago. Why can you not now? What is going on? Is it 
No, the temperature is not down. Why? Why? But why, though? What the absolute... What is going on? Okay, that fixed that. Did these become infected? Is that what happened just now? I... Oh, it must have been the glosonitis. That would be the only germs I had on me. Shoot. Well, huh. It looks like, uh... It looks like my plans have been canceled. Curses foiled again. Well, let's uh, let's do this the more expensive way, I suppose. Oh yeah, I need to. That's really stupid, that if it becomes infected, you can't melt it. I don't think anything else works like that. At least it happened when I had an even amount in the tank, so I'm not wasting some liquid. Okay, well. That's four. And then I need to make two more besides. Okay, so now the only part I'm missing should be the melter. And we just pick that right on up. Take those, might as well deconstruct the whole thing. Just cause it'll be probably move slightly when I complete the smelter. Excellent. So. Right off the bat, this isn't going to be a huge, huge upgrade. I need some building blocks. Yes. The smelter is, uh... The only immediate difference that's noticeable is the smelter is capable of alloying. However... Let's move that. You put this here so that I can put a drain there, which will allow me to put a casting basin here. Yeah. And then, just so we have all our functional blocks kind of facing forward, and complete the multi block with one last boop. There we go. Yes, notice that it only has one slot now. Can it accept infected things? No. That's just, yeah, that's just aggravating. So if anything, it looks like a downgrade. However, the thing about the smeltery is it's expandable. The other thing about the smeltery is it can actually melt stone parts. So this seared brick, yeah, in smelting melting, we can melt plain old cobblestone. We can melt all the cobble parts, including these stone large plates, which is what I want to use because those large plates, all the parts will melt down into whatever they cost. So like over here in the part builder, you see how a pickaxe costs two, a tool rod costs one. This will melt down to be worth two cobblestones worth of seared stone. This will be one and a plate is the densest I know at eight. So with each one of those, it'll be melting down into eight seared stone worth of cobblestone. And a cobblestone is one ingot. So each of those is gonna be, uh, is gonna allow us to cast out eight ingots of seared stone. Yeah. Let's make a couple. 
And you remember how four ingots will get us a block? And remember how we can just turn blocks into more seared, seared, seared yeah, into more seared bricks? Yeah. Let's, in fact, now that this is cheaper, now that seared, now that uh, seared bricks ain't quite worth all that much. Oh, and and if you were wondering, yes, uh, seared stone will cast out in an, in an ingot cast into more seared brick. So let's get rid of the infected stuff. And that, in general, is why I try and keep a clear inventory. I am stumbling all over my tongue tonight. Because, uh, yep. Germs. Icky, icky germs. Hmm. I could have sworn I remember the smelter producing a lot more pollution. Oh, it wants me to make the stone bucket cast? Sure, why not? Just for the lols and for the quests. I think that was in here. There you go. And that'll have things solved for a little while. Yep, it's very nearly full, but uh, the wonderful thing about the smeltery is it's a multi-block that is expandable. Once I cast out a few more of these bricks, I can increase the size of this thing, and that'll give it more internal slots, and all the slots will smelt simultaneously. So the bigger the smeltery is, the faster it runs, and the more efficiently it runs, because... However big it is, it's always going to use the same amount of lava per operation. So, a big, big smeltery will smelt a whole lot of things at once very, very cheaply. And it will hold all that liquid and you can just cast it out. So yes, this is aggravating and slow at first, and it will be aggravating and slow for a little while. But... Each one of these bricks we cast out is going to allow us to work to making the smeltery bigger. And that will work to making the smeltery faster. So this is a process that will feed on itself until we have however big we want it. Effectively. Yes, pretty soon we'll reach a point where it's smelting so fast that the the uh, sticking point will be how fast we can pour liquids out of it. And we can increase that by getting more drains and more tables. And just like that, we've got two more bricks. And, um, yeah, sure, I'll pretty these up. I don't have to. See this how it says part of the smeltery safer decoration? That means that it will in fact work as a smeltery part, but we can we can use any of these that we want for the sake of looks. I think there's also uh, glass. Yeah, there's seared windows, which we would have to make in the mason's workshop, unfortunately. Seared glass, if we took some glass and... Uh, poured a ingot over it. Hmm. That's actually even cheaper. Glass is a little difficult to produce right now. Unless... No, I think that... I think that uh, Silk Touch wouldn't work on the sand. Yeah, But see? Two slots now. And with two slots, I can now smelt 16 ingots at a time, 
four bricks, which will increase the size of this by one. If I'm just building it straight up. We will want to start building it out eventually as well. Let's start sorting all these rewards away. Oh, nice, a durable crate. And nothing else really of note. What is a nice deserving... Uh, I guess... I guess this is the one with the most repeats in it right now. thing that's nice about the smeltery is I think that it finally ore doubles. So let's see, yeah, melter only gets one ore to one ingot. High oven, one ore, one ingot. Smelter, one ore to two ingots. Uh-huh. So, in order to get maximum efficiency if we decide to go mining for ore instead of uh, blocks, we would want to have a smelter big enough to process big amounts of ore. And already I'm at the point where I'm going to want to go and buy some more cobblestone, I think. Let's just make it taller because that's the fastest way to make it work faster right now. Once we have a bit more built up, I will spread it out. Let's see, I think that uh, ultimately I want it to have a 2x2 two two base so that it's doing 4 at a time. Maybe 4 tall. That would give it a 16 piece interior tank. That sounds like a good size for a starter smelter. That should have plenty of space to do lots of uh well i i guess i could make it a four by four there is really no reason to limit myself yeah i could make it a four by four and four tall so that would be a full stack at a time smelter and then i will just be able to work with that for a good long time. There's really no reason not to. Because all it's costing me is tiny amounts of cobblestone, really. And it's really not even all that slow with the many ways that I can cheat. Packing it in at 8 cobble per slot. And not having to uh, make the bricks inside of the, inside of the uh, masonry workshop. There is no reason not to make a huge smelter. There is no reason not to harvest the sugar cane. So 
So I guess let's look in the quest book and let's see. Yeah, next it's going to want to make a refractory crucible, which will... Uh, that's just going to allow us to make lava easier. So I'm probably going to want that next to the smeltery on one of its sides. Especially since another cat... Yeah. The casting channel is something that will allow us to easily input into the tank from the refractory crucible. I think for that I might want a slightly different form factor on how the smeltery is, though. Right now it's raised up out of the ground. I might have to move it so it's inset in. Yeah, that would put the tank at ground level. Then if I have the refractory crucible raised up by one, that would allow us to set up a kind of uh, a fountain formation like we have with this particular crucible for the clay. Yeah, because there's a couple of other machines that use lava. And this being the most convenient source, that would mean we have to move the bloomery. Honestly, there's no reason to keep the bloomery, but... And we'll keep it out of n nostalgia. There you go. It can just live right there. So yeah, let's yeah let's make another three on this size just to keep it even. You see, we're kind of reaching the point where casting out everything is going to take longer than melting more of it. And that is where being able to automate the table with redstone would come in handy. Because eventually we're going to reach a point where we can just... Oh dear, this thing is producing tons of pollution all at once. We're going to reach a point where we can just throw in a bucket load of goods hit a lever and then walk away from it, come back like 10 minutes later and it'll be done. But that won't happen for a little while. If nothing else, we're going to need more hoppers. Any other use for these seared bricks? Yeah, smokers. And making the uh, armor and tool forges, although I think seared stone did for that as well. And that's going to wait until the... Yeah. Huh. Okay. Pig iron. That's an interesting alloy. That's going to require blood, I do believe. Yeah. Iron, blood, and molten clay. Hmm. I think we can get blood out of rotten flesh. Normally the way you get blood is by luring a monster into a smelter. Yeah. If you have a smelter with a little bit of liquid already inside of it, then a monster will take damage and produce a little bit of blood inside of the tank. So usually what you do is you go get a witch, you name tag her, and then you... Uh, put her in your tank and she should regenerate faster than she dies and that's just an infinite blood source the trick then is being able to filter out just the blood without uh, completely depleting your tank and thus losing the source of it or ensuring that there's always a little bit of blood left I guess anyway yeah let's let's tear this guy down let me just put these I don't know, over here for a little while. Let's tear down and rebuild this bad boy. Just to, uh... Just to get it on a slightly more convenient level. Let's keep the drain at that level. We should be able to do that. I think we have enough bricks now. Okay, so let's do this one, two, three, four. Yeah, I don't have quite enough to make it a full, full size yet. 
I do, hmm. Actually, no, let's not, yeah. If I'm gonna make it a four by four eventually, I want it, let's start it out as a long smelter and then give it girth over time. That'll be how we build this out. So, three, four. Tank over here. Yeah. Hmm. We didn't have enough bricks just yet. Oh, wait, we have more in there. We have more in there. We have enough bricks. So then... Do this wrong? I did do this wrong, didn't I? Yeah, because this because the drain has to be nya. Moved it over one to little, I suppose. That's fine. There. Which I guess would put the casting basin on this side. No, that won't work either. Hmm. We'll think of that in a little bit. We'll figure that out in a little bit. I didn't have enough bricks. Shoot. Well, we'll just make it a little bit shorter. Oh wait, I didn't lay out the tank yet. And it is getting dark. Thank goodness we have a slight grace period on that nowadays. That's frustrating. We're exactly one brick short. Well, we'll just shorten it a little bit. smelter once again just a slightly more squat form factor at the moment but we'll be fixing that shortly and we are going to need more lava so let's start making that refractory refractory dectory so the crucible, that uses a tank. So I need eight of those. I'm gonna need one of those. And then I'm gonna need 36 more bricks. Twenty of these. going to need 20 of these, 16 of these, and 4 of those, and just like a so, we have it. Boom. Apparently that was a huge one. 
and we're just going to put that up in a fountain formation. Let's plan to put it here. N no, it needs to go one further. So yes, I do need to move this assembly. And it doesn't matter, it'll turn into pebbles. So, like that. And now I can actually make the dang thing bigger. Let's also make some bricks so that I can make the, uh, so that I can make some poor nozzles. I'm not going to bother making them out of, um, I'm not going to bother making the faucets like these anymore because just making these scorched ones, that only, or, or these seared ones, that only requires a tiny amount of clay and three bricks that are now made out of cobblestone. Let's just pour one more brick just to make it an even amount. So that's... Oh yeah, and I need I need a uh, channel too. Well, I can do that. I can do that, nice and easy. I think a channel is just uh, yeah, it's just six. Four, five. Get this pouring too. Six, seven, eight. And now I know the proper spot where the drain should be. Yes. Let's empty it out just to be safe. Well, no, we don't need to. The only spot it's dangerous to remove on the smeltery with liquid inside is the uh, controller. Otherwise, you are fine so long as you uh, place everything back before too long. So yes, now I can put the uh, I can put the casting basin right there, the table right there, and everything is good and happy. Oops. Yes. And see, we still have all the liquid in place. So, let us go and let us make some parts. So, these casting channels. And a faucet. And let us increase the size of our smeltery until we fill out the length of it that we want. Yes, the liquid disappears, but it'll come back. It'll come back. Doop and doop. Yep, see? Nope, oh, come on. Yes, see in there? It came back. And now I can put a casting channel down there. A faucet on that side. And now, how much time does lava take to make? It takes two minutes. So, two pieces of charcoal and a bunch of cobblestone will get me some lava. Lovely. Let's just get a whole ton. This also makes a nice convenient little staircase that I can jump up. Oh, it can only do eight at a time? That's fine. Processing eight cobble at a time seems to be something of a pattern right now. Yep. And look at that. Three, six, eight blocks now. 
So now we're just going to expand it out this in way. Uh, maybe this in way and that in way. Yeah. Well, I can move those tables. That's fine. Yeah. Don't wanna. Don't wanna cover up too much of the pumpkins. It should fit snugly ish within one of these sections of pumpkins. Really wish I had a lever. Really wish I knew if levers would even work. In any case, let's uh things back. And do I want these casting channels for anything? I might. Are they useful for anything? No. They have no crafting uses. They are only useful as a mechanism. Okay, mud bricks are a no. That's a no. Those are definitely a no. That's a maybe. That's a yes. figure out where they're being stored. Here, I guess. Oh, no. Over there. Hmm. No, not the chisel. pretty much time to go and buy more cobble. Yeah, I think that even if I convert all that I have, yeah, it burns eight at a time now, doesn't it? Can I turn andesite into... It do good. Oh, I guess I got this as a quest reward too. Neat. You just sit snug and safe. Yep. Yes, and uh, it looks a little bit, it looks a little bit derp just sitting all in there, kind of floating piece by piece. Ah, excellent. And uh, that causes the game to lag, but that also causes it to slowly fill up. And these faucets, unlike the, uh, unlike their brethren in lesser form, they will just flow until the tank is empty. So I think that eight cobble should make us something like two buckets worth. That looks about right. Was that just one bucket's worth, maybe? Huh. It only used a single charcoal? Okay. I won't complain. Let's just keep our weight down. Do any of these weigh less than 10 kilograms? Nope. Neat. that I could automate the system right now. Oh well. Hmm. 
you know what? It doesn't need to be expanded to a full stack size smelter right now. Let's see. If I increase it by three, six, nine, twenty. Yeah, if I increase it by one more level, it'll be 16 big. That's big enough for the moment. That's just going to take two, three, four, eight, nine, ten more bricks. Which I should be able to swing at this exact moment. Yep. Let us do that. Okay, so next we need to make some steel and we need to make some uh, means of getting some obsidian. That sounds like an interesting next episode. about there. Uh huh. Nice little long boy smelter with a bit more lava in its gullet. Good. So we have a smelter that is nice and easy to feed. It will be able to expand outwards one in this direction and Mm, one in that direction. We need to figure out... Hmm... Hmm... The lighting might not be quite able to sustain it. Well, that's a puzzle for another day, though. But yes, all we need to do is expand this out a little bit wider, and it will hold a full block. And I think that project will wait until I can auto-pour. Simply because it's boring sitting here and doing this. For no other purpose than making the smelter bigger. Yeah. But I think this will be sufficient for our purposes for a little while. And this will certainly help us with making some steel in the next episode. I'll see you then.